Okay, I don't know where I got this idea, you guys, but I, I literally combed through YouTube trying to figure out who had this idea first, or maybe it was one of you guys that wrote it in a comment box. But I thought it'd be fun to go through a bunch of makeup that I feel like collectively we all stopped talking about. So we've got a mix of drugstore, some high end. So what I did is I grabbed my coffee this morning and I went back to my makeup collection and I kind of combed through and looked for things that stood out to me as things that used to be really hyped up but that I really haven't heard a lot about for one reason or another. And I have some thoughts on some of these, some of them that have maybe been dethroned that maybe I found better versions of out there that I used to love. So I'm excited to talk about this. I think it's gonna be fun. So grab your coffee, tea, whatever, tequila. <laughs> I don't have tequila in mine, I swear. It's just black coffee. So first one that jumped out when I was looking at my primers was this Cover FX Dewy Skin Primer. I feel like when this came out, like, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago, Everyone was talking about it and then no one was talking about it, myself included. I had been trying it and I was like, I think I like it. Here's the problem with this. It's a very fussy primer. It's almost glossy. And so what the way I'd been applying it is like here, I have to avoid my nose because my nose is already a greasy mess. It literally feels like you're rubbing baby oil on your face. Maybe a little bit thicker than that, but that's what it feels like. And so if you have extremely dry skin, I do actually think you'd like it, but I just felt like every time I would use this, my makeup just, it would look nice for a few hours because of it, but it wouldn't last very well. It was just a little too glossy. This is something I could probably see myself getting rid of, but I feel like, see, every time I put it on, I'm like, I do like, I like that glossy look on the skin. So we're gonna see how this performs underneath what we're gonna use for foundation today. This might've been the biggest contender for most hyped up for so long and then dropped off the face of the planet. And that would be the It Cosmetics CC Cream. Oh my gosh, I for so long love, love, loved this. But my one complaint and my still standing complaint <laughs> is that this, the shade range is not great and I think they attempted to make it better. It's, it's just not great. And I also could not find a shade match that made any sense for me. They were either way too light or way too dark. And I know they also added some in-between shades and they still didn't work. So right now I happen to have fair. I've tried fair light, I've tried light. None of them work for me. So we're just gonna use it. The CC cream naming is very misleading. It's a foundation. Um, it might have good skincare in it, but it is a very high coverage foundation. So just keep that in mind. I mean, it just is what it is. There's nothing wrong with that. But I do think the naming of it is confusing. It has a very, very strong scent. I've discovered over the years that a sponge is my favorite way to apply it. And it's funny, I used to wear this every day and it has been a hot minute since I've worn it. So I'm kind of curious how my thoughts have changed because I don't think I've worn it, I don't know, in the last year? Which means how old is that? But I mean, you can see it is freaking covering. I'm gonna be Uncle Fester here. I better take care of my red eyes. And the one thing I really do like about it is that for something that does have quite a lot of coverage, it does look nice on the skin. And you know what? It looks nice over that primer. So this might be one of the few that like really might work well with that dewy skin primer. This is kind of their like middle of the road one. They have a matte version and then they have a radiance version. The radiance one is too much for me, it really is. Out of the three, I do think I like the best for my skin type, kind of more normal, leaning dry, and because I like a more dewy finish. And also keep in mind, again, that primer underneath is definitely pretty dewy. I don't hate this, I really don't. It's just a matter of finding a shade match that works. And you know what, looking at this, actually it's not bad of a shade match for me, but I just feel like because so many things got released, you know, over the years and so many people began doing more higher coverage type BB cream, CC cream marketed products, that this just kind of got lost in the shuffle. And it's not that the product itself is bad. I think for the right person, it's very good. It's higher coverage. It's got SPF of 50, I still wear SPF underneath it. My verdict on this is I really do like it and honestly trying it again, now I wanna use it again. It's like reignited why I liked it in the first place, that it had that coverage, but it looks really pretty on the skin. So. I recently got these like stainless steel short straws on Amazon 
and uh, I don't know if I love them or hate them. They're still new to me. You can just throw them in the dishwasher, which is nice. And I love that they had shorter ones, but I don't know how I feel about the metal on my teeth. You know, it just feels weird. I can link them below though. It's it's cool that they have the shorter ones because what I was always using were reusable plastic ones that I would just cut in half and just wash them and reuse them. All right, another product that I feel like when they were first launched a couple years ago were like a big deal and then no one talked about them and that would be the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. This one's actually a little bit dark for me, but we're just gonna use it. Actually, let me rephrase. It's a little bit like orange for me, but it typically works once it's blended in. I know a lot of people, instead of using this for concealer, would prefer to use it as like a spot foundation because it really does have that kind of coverage. This is a product that honestly, I'll probably declutter eventually. It's not a favorite of mine. It's it's just okay. I don't think it's like the worst concealer I've ever used, but I just don't feel like it's anything life-changing. But the nice thing is it does blend into the skin pretty well and pretty quickly, which is I think why people end up liking it for concealer. It's kind of like weirdly lightweight, but still has a decent amount of coverage. So that, that part about it, I do like. I just don't think it's anything life-changing. I have changing. My Midwestern accent is coming out. It works well enough. It's not something I'm gonna repurchase. Like I was saying, there are ones at the drugstore I like more than that. I really like the collab one. It's sold at Sally Beauty. It's like $12, so it's a little more expensive. And then I also really like the L'Oreal Full Wear if you want some higher coverage. I think that one is really good. And then the CoverGirl one. I can link all three of those below. I think those are pretty darn good drugstore concealers that I just prefer a little bit more than this. I think they're a little bit longer lasting on the face and like the under eye. All right, for brows, I feel like <laughs> the Anastasia Brow Wiz was like the only brow pencil for the longest time. Like it was the only thing anyone ever talked about. And then I think the only reason this stopped getting talked about wasn't because it like suddenly was no good or whatever. It was just because there were a million other brow pencils that joined the market that had larger shade ranges like this did and that did the same job for cheaper, honestly. One of my favorites is the LA Girl one, and that one's like five bucks versus this one that's around 20. I still like this one, I still use it. It's in medium brown, it's a pretty good match for me. The brow market, of course, became a little more saturated, and there were ones at cheaper price points that were more accessible, and that's all that happened. But I do stand by that I do think it's a good brow pencil. I just don't think you have to spend the money and as I always say, half of the brow game is finding a pencil that's the right shade for you. Because once you find that, you just want to keep rebuying it because you're like, finally. And not every brand has, you know, every single possible shade under the sun. What do you guys think with all this drama with like Tati and Shane Dawson and Jeffree Star? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Do you care? Have you watched some of the videos? I feel so overwhelmed by it. I have never been someone that really watched uh, Jeffree Star. I watched some of the Shane Dawson docu-series when it first, when all that first started, and then it was just too much to keep up with, honestly, so I just, you know, you, life gets in the way. But YouTube is a big part of my world, you know what I mean? I mean, this is my, this is my job right now, and so it's like, you know, curiosity. So Tati uploaded a video, if you don't know, recently, um, just kind of explaining some of where, not really where she's been, I guess, but what's been going on with all that, and. Ooh, it's overwhelming. I was saying in an IG story, I don't really know what to believe. <laughs> I don't know what to think. I don't know who to believe. I don't know. And, you know, I've kind of filled Tyler in on this the other night. He literally, I said, do you want me to explain the drama that's going on? And he was like, do you think I will be interested in it? I'm like, I don't know. And he said, I'll give you one minute. I'm like, okay, can I explain all this in one minute? So he started a timer and it took me about two minutes to get through most of it. But at the end of it, he said, you know what, Jess, at the end of the day, it literally does not affect you. This is just too much. It's too much and so for me, I'd rather just have my small corner of the internet with y'all and we're happy and we're just talking about makeup and home and cooking and whatever and drinking our coffee and that's that. Um, all right, wow, didn't expect to talk about that in this video. So, so another brand slash product that I feel like used to get talked about a lot were these milk makeup sticks. So I feel like the milk bronzer gets talked about a lot, but this one used to be talked about a decent amount and now like no one talks about it. It's the milk makeup blush sticks, lip and cheek sticks. And this one happens to be in the shade Work. My one complaint about this is I feel like you always have to warm it up. I mean, is it really that big of a deal? Not really. I don't typically draw it right on. I will typically go in with a like brush like this and either do it right on there once I've warmed it up or like on my hand. And I'll just kind of tap it into place. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I feel like it stays pretty well. It's just that it definitely, 
I definitely feel like it just takes that extra bit of work of warming it up. So then I feel like sometimes I'm kind of wasting product, but am I ever gonna run through this? No. Now, again, I feel like these got kind of shoved by the wayside because tons of brands started coming out with blush sticks and bronzer sticks and cream this, cream that, which I love. Um, and so I think that's why people were like, I don't really have to spend the money on one that's this expensive, you know, in the $20 range. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Do I think I would ever buy another shade of this? Probably not. I really like the um, ColourPop blush sticks that they have. Guys, same thing, but it's eight bucks. So just something to keep in mind and they have a lot of different shades, but it does look nice. It can look really nice on the skin and kind of, you know, melt in with your foundation, which I do like. All right, I'm gonna powder a little bit because we've got some shadow, eyeshadow we're gonna use. So here's one. Remember the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Powder? This one is still talked about, but it used to be like the only loose powder like everyone on YouTube used. And now, again, you're seeing a trend. Everything just got oversaturated. And so, you know, you don't have to spend this kind of money. I love, love the Maybelline Fit Me Powder. Like I ended up reaching for that one honestly more than this, but this one is still really, really good. It definitely, definitely prolongs the wear of your makeup. I don't use it every day because it is still a powder and it still looks like a powder, but it really makes a difference. Like when I use this versus when I'm not, and this is really true for most loose powders, you know, the makeup really does last longer. So I make sure to like tap it off and then I just hit my T-zone. You can see how it kind of blurred that area. I'm going to hit my nose, which always needs it in my chin and kind of that area right there. And I think I am gonna hit my under eye because I don't think that ColourPop stuff is gonna stay if I don't. Yeah, the ColourPop stuff just creases like crazy. And you can see the difference between when you powder it and when you don't. I mean, it definitely makes a difference when it comes to like kind of flattening out that area. Holy moly. That's that, I still love it. And the reality is, you know, if you can afford it, or you need a new loose powder, it is really good and it's gonna last you forever. And this kind of powder is not gonna go bad anytime soon. So it's one of those, at least if you're investing the money, you're really gonna get your money's worth out of it. I need to do an Amazon favorites video soon. I bought these bracelets on Amazon. They're like stretchy, cute ones. And one of the packs I bought because Leanne says, who I freaking love, uh, had like linked them and she wears them all the time. And then this gold one, they were selling separately, but it's really cute too. So I can link these because I'm just like, now I want a million. I just love them. Here's a palette I'm gonna briefly talk about and use, the Anastasia Sultry one. I don't even think they're selling this. A lot of you guys have found it like at TJ Maxx and places like that, because I think it was discontinued. But it's one of my favorites, like absolute favorites. It's the only one I still own. I think it's beautiful because it's got these unbelievably gorgeous shimmers that you can use as like a single shadow look, which is typically what I do. I feel like with Anastasia, they kind of, I mean, they started releasing too much. Just everything changed there. And whereas before, I feel like for me, I would like wait with bated breath for like their next release. And it was only a couple times a year and it was a big deal when they release a palette. And then suddenly they were releasing like four palettes at a time and it just felt a little less special to me. And I think that's why I kind of lost interest in it. And I don't think I'm alone in that. It's not that their new palettes aren't any good because I, I think that they are, I don't know, but I just, the interest isn't there anymore. And plus I just don't buy tons of palettes like I used to. So my favorite thing to do is to wear one of the shimmers all over the eye. I'm gonna do Steampunk. It's a little bit different. I don't use that all the time. It's more of a like greenish gold and I'm just gonna tap it, it's so beautiful. My husband just came home, he was gonna go swim in like our neighborhood pool like for exercise, like do some laps, and he was all excited, and cause it's a really hot day. He just came back, you know, three minutes later, I'm like, what the heck, did you already swim? He's like, no, they had to close down all the pools cause a kid pooped in them, <laughs> like in all of that. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this birch shade and just kind of blend it into it. So I'm gonna throw on some liner and mascara. I don't have any here today to talk about like within this thing and I'll be right back. It, it needs a lot. I feel like all this stuff. Another one that I kind I almost didn't include, but I do feel like it was kind of talked about when they first launched and then it fizzled. And they're really good. These are the Milani Strobe Light Instant Glow Powders. I have the shade number one, Afterglow. Now they can you can definitely get heavy handed with it, but they're really good highlighters. They're not like patchy they're really kind of creamy and buttery like i said you do want to probably use a light hand with it and actually these milani the milani like highlighting brush is incredible i know i love it i think i've seen taylor win use it a lot like it's just a good highlighting brush 
um, it's really soft. So I tap a little bit off and then it just adds that gorgeous glow. I love it. I think it's really, really good. I don't know why they're not more talked about anymore. Uh, mm, 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 mm. For lips, do you remember when everyone was talking about the Maybelline Color Sensational Lips? I'm talking about like five years ago. I don't remember if then it was a new line. Maybe it was when it first launched and they have all these shades. Well, they're still there and they're still really good. In fact, it's one of my absolute favorite lines at the drugstore for lipstick. I really like their cream line. Their matte line, I, I think was awfully drying. Again, anything matte, I just don't like, but they're still really pigmented if you're looking for it. But their cream line is just like a classic lipstick line. They're really pigmented, but they're a little bit creamier. I do still like to line my lips. I'm just gonna throw on my like daily lip liner I use. This is the MAC lip liner in Dervish. This shade that I have is Flush Punch, number 222. It's like my perfect daily pink color. It's so pretty and feminine. It's got a little pop of brightness to it, like in person especially, but I just like it. I think this line is amazing. I do wanna try more from it. This is the only one I currently have and I really don't need any new lipsticks. But I do, since I know I like the cream line, I definitely wanna try maybe at least one more shade, maybe like a red. So that's all of it. You know, there are some things that I know I probably will declutter in the future slash not buy again, like the ColourPop concealer, the Cover FX Dewy Skin Primer, but others that I absolutely love and like the IT Cosmetic CC Cream that really I kind of rediscovered today. I, I knew I liked it, but I thought maybe I wouldn't like it anymore and it looks so nice. So I hope that this was enjoyable for you guys to watch. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and I'd love if you subscribed and joined our little corner of the internet here. I upload three times a week. I talk about beauty, lifestyle, cooking, family, all kinds of stuff. Come chat with me on Instagram. It is at it's Jessica Braun and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.